In this short video, I will walk you through the steps required to install N-Computing vSpace software in an L300 access device for an evaluation environment. Before thinking about a large deployment, we always recommend setting up a small pilot environment to help you understand and plan how you will want to deploy. First, you will need a host to install the vSpace software. In my case, I'm going to use a virtual machine on my laptop. This way, I don't have to dedicate a full machine, and I can easily start with a clean installation of Windows without worrying about finding drivers. You may already have a machine and an OS set up and ready to go, but if not, here's a quick look at how I set up my environment. First, I create a new virtual machine. I am using VMware Workstation, but you can use your favorite tool. I am giving my virtual machine four virtual CPUs and three gigs of RAM just to make sure I get good performance. Also, make sure you bridge your network adapter so that the vSpace server is available on the same network as the L300 device you are testing. This will make setup easier later on. Next, I simply insert my Windows installation CD and begin the installation process. I am using Windows 2003 R2, but check out our website for all the different uh, licensing options. Once the installation is complete, I'm going to disable the Windows Internet Explorer Enhanced Security Configuration through the Add or Remove Programs menu in the Control Panel. I am also going to set the theme service to automatically start on startup so that my desktop will get the Windows XP desktop theme that users are used to rather than the drab and boring server desktop. Now I'm ready to install vSpace. First, just to make sure I have the latest version, I'm going to go to www.ncomputing.com to download the software. Since this is a fresh install, I'll go back and install Adobe Flash while I'm here. When complete, I go back to ncomputing.com, click on Support, scroll down to the Download Center, and then navigate to find the correct version of vSpace for L300. There will soon be versions for multiple versions of Windows and Linux operating systems, so check back soon if the version you desire isn't already there. So now I download the software package to my desktop. Notice that in the package there is a user manual and a multimedia technical brief that will be useful later after the installation. Installing vSpace is pretty simple. I simply launch the install wizard and just click Next, paying close attention to read all the licensing agreements. The installer will then ask you if you want to install the network console. This means that you can view and manage vSpace hosts other than the one that you are installing. This is handy for an administrator, but you might not want to check the box to limit the visibility of someone who has local administrative privileges. The vSpace installer will also install Media Player Classic. This will enable users to view videos that may not play on Windows Media Player. Once the installation is complete, simply reboot. Once you've rebooted, you should take a minute to register once you have the L300 access devices set up. The registration wizard is easy and ensures that you won't have a timeout after 60 minutes. If you are not installing the host on an existing domain, you will need to create some users and then add those users to the remote access group. This can be done in the computer management menu, accessed by right-clicking on My Computer and selecting Manage. Now I'm going to set up the L300 access device. First, I take the L300 out of the box and make all my connections. Note that the keyboard and mouse should be connected to the keyboard and mouse ports, not the USB accessory ports. Now simply turn on the L300. It will connect to the network and soon display the default connection menu. If you press refresh, it will likely already find the vSpace host you have just set up, but I'll walk you through some of the setup options. 
Let's look at the Network tab access to the Device Setup button on the main screen. Notice that I can select DHCP to have a DHCP server on the network automatically configure the network settings. Or I could choose to configure manually. As a convenience, we have also have a simple ping test so that you can verify the network connection. I can also change the device name to something logical like department or location to help with asset management later. And finally there is a setting for LAN or WAN mode. While WAN mode is not yet enabled, when available in vSpace the option will light up allowing you to increase the compression of video and audio to reduce the bandwidth required by the unit while trading off compute resources on the back end. Now that there is the network set up, we can look at the Login Settings tab. Here I can decide what default resolution and color depth I want a new session to be created. I can set a time for when the display should go to sleep, and I can set up a unit to auto-login. There are two types of auto-login. The first is just using a username and password to a session defined by the user's profile. The second is what we call kiosk mode, or logging into an application without the underlying window. This is used for kiosks or digital signage applications. While you shouldn't need to worry about the Managing Groups tab, you might want to check it out just to see the flexibility of the product as you scale up to larger deployments. vSpace host groups are collections of vSpace hosts that an L300 device may connect to. By identifying a group, an L300 may connect to any host in that group. So you could have a group of two low-cost hosts in a remote branch, or a group of virtual machines with the same departmental image to scale up in a large corporate environment. This obviously helps with management as well as provides important failover features. The last tab that we will look at is the Connection Settings tab. Here is where you decide if the L300 device will automatically connect to a specific vSpace host or host group, or if you allow the user to manually select a host. Manual selection could include displaying all discovered hosts, displaying groups defined in the device, or allowing users to manually enter a host name or IP address. Again, these options provide a lot of flexibility for almost any deployment. Now that your virtual desktop setup is complete, check out the features of the L300. Play some videos, browse YouTube, connect a USB drive, and get a feel for the user experience and ease of management of the vSpace virtual desktop.